I've been paddling, you know, for about 35 years. Uh, and I, you know, I don't think I've ever had a, a situation quite like this. What started as a normal day kayaking on the lake for Alan Hutto turned into a situation where he had to spring into action. And saw a boat on the far side of the towers uh, capsizing. So I was like, wow. It happened Saturday morning around 11. Two men were stranded in the water as their boat sank. One of them didn't have a life jacket. They were uh, alarmed, as you might expect. So, I, you know, I paddled over to them and, you know, had them grab a hold of my bow, particularly the guy who didn't have a life jacket. But the rescue wasn't over. The men were still in cold water, at risk for hypothermia. There was a pontoon boat not too terribly far away, so we flagged them down and they came over and just kind of maneuvered everything so we could get them on the pontoon boat. The men were thankful for the help and Huddle feels his training prepared him for this situation. We practice rescues. That's one of the things you do as a, a sea kayaker. And so that, you know, that training kind of helped. But he says every day he sees danger on the lake and urges people to take as many precautions as you can. First of all, always wear your life jacket if you're in a small boat and it's rough. Uh, and you really need to dress for the water temperature. And while, while you know, the outside temperature is warming up, the water is still pretty cold. And if you go in, you can get hypothermia pretty quick. The fate of Georgetown's steel mill hanging in the balance tonight. Now one hearing away from what could possibly be the end. The Georgetown City Zoning Administrator has informed the mill that they did not comply with the city's zoning district rules and should stop operations, but not before a meeting is set for next week to have a conversation about that decision. ABC 15's Andrew James was the first to give us a look into the reopening of the mill and continues our coverage tonight with this new development. Roughly two years since Liberty Steel had to close down temporarily due to the pandemic, its doors may be shuttered for good by city council. The pressure is heating up on steelworkers in Georgetown. We are in uncharted waters. I don't know of a case like this has ever been before city council. The case of closing the mill permanently, a six page letter from the city's zoning administrator could seal the fate of more than 60 workers at the mill. James Sanderson speaks for those employees. That really is what's going to be very upsetting to the people that come back to work and got the mill up and running. They are in operation right now. They're making steel in there. According to the administrator's letter, they did not return to work fast enough. Within the redevelopment district zoning rules for Front Street, heavy industry isn't allowed anymore, except industry that was already in place. But if that site were to sit dormant and unused for a year, it would be deemed abandoned and lose the city's favor. We never, since we went down, abandoned this property. We had people in here performing care maintenance, taking care of the equipment. The notice was given in April 2020 that they'd closed due to COVID and that light work would continue. Now, the zoning administrator said in the letter that's when the clock on Liberty Steel started ticking, even though Sanderson and mill officials say they heard otherwise. There was an agreement worked out between Sandra Eunice, the city administrator, who speaks and represents the city, the lead attorney for the Liberty Steel basically worked out an agreement that says that February 1 would be the start date, the deadline date. And his letter to counsel, the zoning admin says only he had the authority to make that decision, which he never agreed to. The mill made that request based on unforeseeable circumstances, but the administrator said nowhere under the local rules is a pandemic an allowable excuse to stop operations. He ended the letter saying the work at the mill must stop. But Sanderson says their fight is not over yet. We have a great document that was signed by both parties, and they are the ones that's going to have to look at that document and try to continue find the loopholes that they think they can crawl out of. I reached out to the city administrator as well as the mayor for comment. I'm still waiting to hear back. The first meeting on this discussion about the fate of the Georgetown Steel Mill will take place next week. The appeals board will look over the mill ownership's appeal of that decision. The final meeting and the final decision could come as soon as the first week of April.